So there's not too much in life that scares me, but John's tool makes me a little nervous. So it's not necessarily the tool that scares me, it's just, you know, working on somebody else's expensive equipment. But we're going to try to fix this Starrett 98-8. This is an 8-inch Starrett precision level. If you haven't watched my What's in the Box video, uh, he kindly loaned this to me to do some leveling on my new Atlas. And uh, part of the deal was he loaned me the precision level and I bought a new vial and we'll install it. And we have a new vial here from Starrett. If you've ever watched a video of somebody doing this, it's 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 kind of it's kind of scary because you're using you know brute force on a precision instrument. Uh, yeah, Keith Rucker had a video that came out a couple years ago where he did one of these, and um, he, he had so much trouble getting this this apart. He actually put the tube in the vise. Uh, I love Keith Rucker. That was but that video was probably his worst video that he's ever made. And I get it because you know at some point you just you you run out of you run out of good options and then you start making bad decisions. It happens. It's it's happened to me many 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 times. We're going to try to do this the way that Mark Ratkowski at MR Tool Repair. If you guys are familiar with him, he's a in the U.S. He's one of the best guys to send things like dial indicators, any precision instruments to to be uh, both repaired and calibrated. He's done a couple of uh, dial indicators for me before, so I, I reached out to him on Facebook and I asked him his process for doing this. And we are gonna be doing his process for doing this, which essentially is not much different than, than, Keith's, pro than Keith's process, except uh, I won't be putting the actual tube section into the vise. Like I said, he ran into a lot of, a lot of issues with that one and uh, Let's, let's not try to repeat that and let's not get flamed in the comments for doing this the wrong way. First thing we got to do is take this apart. Uh, this is one of these horrible slotted screws that's very wide and very uh, thin, but I ground down a, a wide older screwdriver to get that loose. It's not tight, so it's no big deal. Get the nut off with a 3 8 wrench. It's already loose. Take that piece off. There's a little bit of oil under here, which there should be, and there's a little collar here that centers the the uh, tube. And there's a nut on the bottom. I'm not, not going to mess with those right now. I'm just going to put these pieces back on and put this piece in back in the box for the time being. Uh, I will do a little bit of light cleaning and re-oil it when I put it back together. But the hard part of this job, I understand. I've never done one of these before, is getting these, this tube apart. And essentially it is just press fit. So the first thing here is that these are not ground surfaces. So we can use, uh, you know, we can, we can use these to hold. That's, that's, not a, that's not an issue. When I first saw these, I thought those have to be ground surfaces. And holding that in a vise is just not a good idea. But they're not. They are actually uh, kind of rough cut, actually, if you can see that. And actually, this hole is a little bit oblong. Maybe somebody's tried to take these apart before, and when they pressed it back together, they got that hole a little oblong on the one side. So we're going to hold this in my little Wilton. It has copper jaws, and I've taken a file and cleaned up the faces of the jaws so that we got nice, uh, you know, we don't have any shavings or anything in there. I'm going to just put it in there, crank it down a little bit, and then before we get to the pliers, I'm actually going to use this crescent to just kind of twist it a little bit and kind of break the break the caps loose. I'm using these particular ones not because they're a great set of crescent, they're just they don't get used very much and the faces are very smooth. Get that on there. And then I'm just going to twist a little bit. while pulling at the same time and actually we're not even going to need the pliers. See that came loose just like that. No issues whatsoever. Now if we look in there you can see probably that there is what appears to be plaster of Paris which is I believe what they used at the factory. There's also some 
what looks like a little bit of rust maybe when the liquid came out, not sure. So that actually came apart easier than I expected it to and easier than um, that I've seen a lot of other ones come apart. We still got to get the other one off, but we got to get the vial out first and we still got to press these back together parallel to one another. So still got a ways to go here. So now we can take the tube off, the outer tube off. And I will say that the Starrett logo, this isn't going to make any difference, but the Starrett logo is on the side. Uh-oh. Okay, so taking this apart, we will notice that there are some little spring steel pieces in here. Now, you saw me take this apart. That's the first time I've taken it apart and there was only one of these in here. And what that does is just put a little bit of tension on the tube. Like so. Just so it's not flopping around. Uh, this has apparently been apart before because there's only one of them. It did not drop here, it's not attached inside the tube. So I'll see what I can do about that. It is just a little tiny piece of spring steel. You can't even hardly I can't even hardly hold it. And it's got just a little bit of curve in it. I'm gonna put that in here so I don't lose it. Just to let you know, John. There was only one of those little springs in here. They go in these little slots. So somebody has had this apart before. And I'm going to just use uh, a 9 16 drill bit. And we're just going to kind of go in there. It fits nice and snugly. Uh, this is something I saw in another video and it seemed to work. And that's not really making a dent in that stuff. Oh, that stuff's hard. I'm going to get a smaller drill bit. I'm going to use a smaller drill bit. I'm just going to lightly break some of this stuff up. Put a hole in the middle. I'm not trying to touch the sides. I'm not worried about breaking the vial, obviously. Getting it. Yeah, we're getting a bite of it now. I got a little bit more out of it. I need to try to break this vial up a little bit. Plastic hammer. Just kind of trying to take it out piece by piece and not damage the tube. I'm also trying not to put glass through my hand. Or get glass flung all over the place. And I can actually see the other plug now. Alright, clean that off a little bit. It's a brass bar. Just gonna drop it in there and use a big hammer and just kind of try to hold it and pop it at the same time. It's coming. Oh, there it goes. Alright, so at this stage I'm, I'm pretty impressed. This was not nearly as difficult a job as it looks like on a couple of the other videos I saw. So I went ahead and talked to John, the owner of the this level, and uh, we just decided that, first of all, that it probably had been opened, and that when they did that they lost a spring because I, I didn't lose the spring. Dude, what I'm going to try to do is I'm gonna try to replicate one of these springs. Now this is tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm gonna try to replicate one using a piece of old feeler gauge. So I'm gonna get a measurement on this. I've got an old feeler gauge that I will take and section out a piece 
and try to make one of these springs. Now it's a little bit difficult getting an accurate measurement on it because of the curve, but I would say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of ten thousandths. So I'm going to use the ten thousandths feeler gauge blade and we'll clean up we'll clean up this goo on the on it. Like I said, this is an old set that I don't use anymore because of it got corroded. I, I will say that the cover felt fine. You know, the, all that spring does is put a little tension on the outside cover for the vial. And that, that, it looked fine. I mean, it worked fine. So we could actually, if this doesn't work, we could actually put it back together as is. Really, the one spring works. But, you know, gone to this trouble it's probably not going to be open again for another 20 years might as well take a few minutes and see if this will work so I know that these are spring steel I don't know you know how high of a quality of spring steel and you can you can actually put a little bit of bend in them but let's see if I can actually cut them see how hard they are see if I can cut with a just a pair of snips oh yeah I'm just gonna kind of do this by eye Actually, before I cut it, I'm going to go over to the vise real quick, and I'm just going to try to put a little tiny bit of bend in it. All right, I put just a little bit of bend in there. Put on here. Just give it a cut. And then, because it's, it's going to go flying across the room, I'm going to put these hemostats on there and cut the other piece. Go kill a chicken. All right, got it off. Now let's compare it. Hey, that's magnetic. Okay, don't try this at home, kids. I gotta get my my makeshift demagnetizer out here. Okay, so we got it a little bit better, I think. Yeah, much better, okay. Still got a little bit in there, I just cannot get it all out. So, we are a good size. Now I'm just gonna go over, I'm just gonna round off the edges. All right, so actually I decided to just use a file. This is pretty soft stuff. I expected it to be a little bit tougher, but. The springiness seems to be there. Okay, so after a little filing, this is what we came up with. See how they compare. It's quite a bit smaller, actually. That's okay. Other one in. Could have got a little bit better fit, probably. Can't turn it at all now. Almost too tight. Let's pull it out. Let's see if they stayed in. And there's one. We'll see if this other one stayed into the uh, where it was supposed to. And it did. Still got a little bit of curve in it. Could actually put a little bit more in it. Let me try that. As you can see there, it's staying in the groove. As you go over it. And then. Nice and tight. Nice. I think that that's gonna work pretty well. All right, just gonna give this thing a little bit of a clean up. A little bit of alcohol on a toothbrush here. Just get the grime out of it. Alright, I got some acid-free paper here. 
idea how much I want here. I've already got a sheet in there. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to space this thing up because it's just a little bit low. Eyeball line this up. We can use uh, Pierre's method of eyeballing, which is eyeballing with a caliper. Alright, so I just picked up some uh, plaster of Paris on Amazon, pretty cheap. It's decent stuff for uh, moldings and modelings and whatever. Use this dowel rod to push it down. All right, that all felt a little bit too much like arts and crafts, but we got there and it is pretty much set up. Anyway, I used an end mill, flat end mill to, uh, to just square off in there. We're gonna do this the way basically everybody I've seen do this, at least get these things started because they need to be square and parallel to one another. So we'll take a pair of matching B blocks and get them to where they need to go and then I'll take uh, this big Irwin quick, quick clamp and uh, we'll squeeze those together. When I took this apart I believe that the Starrett logo was on the non-cupped side. So we have a cupped side and we have a non-cupped side. But watching a couple videos, it looks like it was supposed to be on the cup side. So it really doesn't matter, <laughs> I don't think. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna put it on the cup side, and this goes down. The cup side goes down. Sort of almost get these started by hand. You may not be able to see that as well, cause uh, cause of the parallax on the camera, but. I think that if we look at where the bubble is between the red dots, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, that was pretty tight. So I just got maybe a sixteenth of an inch here to go. I've got it just loosely in here in these soft or copper jaws again and I'm just going to tap it with a plastic hammer and see if I can get it to go down all the way but I want the glass open because there we go farther and that is seated it's a little nerve-wracking uh, it would be nerve-wracking if it were my tool it's so it's you know it's a little uh, whew. I mean, even though the vial's not that expensive, actually, but so if you broke it again, you know, you're only going to be out about 20 bucks. You have to do all the work again, though. Uh, Mark Ratajkowski actually said in a, in a response to somebody else about one of these that, you know, it's not a bad, it's not, it's not a bad job. It's, it's something you can do yourself. Now, I'm not going to calibrate this right now because, uh, I still don't need it right this minute, but I definitely wanted to get this job done. I will calibrate it when I use it. You know, these things you probably got to calibrate every time you use them, basically. But there it is. One vial replaced. Pretty chuffed about that. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking, you know, working on another man's tool. John's going to have fun with that one in the comments. Anyway, John, I hope uh, you like that. I know you're 
and you're probably wanting it back now, but I need to keep it for a little bit longer, but uh, I will get it back to you as soon as possible, and uh, hopefully when, I, when it gets back to you, it won't be broken. So, all right, guys, there we go. Level replacement on a Starrett 98-8. Thanks for watching.